You can't disprove a negative, it's a waste of time. You might as well try to disprove that there is no Santa Claus or Spaghetti Monster. Exactly. So, are we done here? But see, we can disprove those things. There is no... Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, Dusty, how can you prove a negative? You can't prove something doesn't exist. It will be like me asking you to prove that there's a giant pink unicorn behind you that doesn't exist. How would you prove it? Obviously, if you're the one making a claim that a giant pink unicorn exists, it's up to you to prove it, not somebody to disprove it. This is basic childhood logic. But obviously I can't, though, because you can't prove the Smurfs don't exist, just like you can't prove anything doesn't exist. This is obviously just... We're just making it up. As absurd as that is, it is logically impossible to prove a negative. Hey guys, so today I want to make a video disproving Christianity. By far, the biggest question that I get from people is asking me to prove to them that there's no God which is an impossible thing to ask somebody to do because it's impossible to disprove a negative. Um, I, I can't tell you that there's no God for sure. I can't prove to you that there's no fairies. I can't prove to you that there's not a flying spaghetti monster, etc. You get my point. Um, but what I feel like the idea that one cannot prove a negative is an example of folk logic, and it's a claim made by both atheists and theists alike. In almost any introductory logic course, one will hear about modus tollens. Modus tollens is a valid argument that takes the structure of if p then q, not q, therefore not p. Notice what we can show with a modus tollens argument and some simple premises. If I'm in London, then I'm in England. I'm not in England, therefore I'm not in London. The argument is valid, and further, it is sound. If you doubt that the premises are true, then feel free to visit me and tell me all about how science has made deductive arguments irrelevant. This idea of deductive arguments, um, which, which sounds good, is not the way we learn about reality. Okay? Deductive arguments just don't work. They lead to irrational actions. Whoa, 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 what? If one cannot prove a negative, then this calls into question the ability to prove anything. First, any claim can be made into a negative. Claiming I am in Chicago is logically equivalent to saying I am not not in Chicago. Second, if one's definition of proof means knowing with absolute certainty, then yes, proving a negative would be pretty difficult. But this applies equally to positive claims. I can claim with a fair amount of certainty what city I'm currently in. But how can I rule out the possibility of deception? Perhaps I'm dreaming, or I'm simply a brain in a vat. On either conceptual, empirical, or scientific grounds, we're capable of demonstrating the non-existence of things. If a student claims she encountered a square circle while walking to class, we know she is mistaken, since a square circle is that which is both round and not round. It could not exist in some possible worlds, so it cannot exist in the actual world. And it wouldn't surprise me if, by tinkering with tesseracts, wrangling refraction, or contorting with quantum physics, you could make a square circle. You blew it. Or, as another example, the logical problem of evil attempts to demonstrate that a god who is omnipotent, omnibenevolent, and omniscient does not exist. It does so by arguing a contradiction arises from god and evil coexisting. Only one can exist evil exists, so there is no god. At this moment, I'm confident that a full-grown cat is not currently on my laptop. A cat would take up space, it would make using my laptop very difficult, it would provoke my allergies, and it might meow. Well, currently, I can work on my laptop with no problems, I'm not sneezing, I hear no meowing, and I can move my arms around my laptop without running into a cat. Empirically, I can show that there's no cat on my laptop. Negative claims being verified through science isn't completely unheard of either. For example, from the work of scientists, we know that vaccinations do not cause autism, and we know that the Earth isn't a few thousand years old. Finally, the claim that one cannot prove a negative is itself a negative. It's self-defeating in a few ways. First off, to prove that one cannot prove a negative would be to prove a negative. If, however, the claim cannot be proven, then why believe it? Or again, if it can be proven, it ends up being self-defeating. Additionally, it's self-defeating since those who claim one cannot prove a negative end up proving a negative. They prove they are not reading much philosophy.